How many star bits are actually needed to fully complete Super Mario Galaxy? Now this is a challenge I promised you last year, and well today, the time has come. This video is a sequel to my first Is it possible to beat Mario Galaxy without a star bit? So if you haven't watched this one first, well a card should appear on your screen right now, so tap it and watch it, you know? Alright, okay, everybody that's still here has probably seen the first part, so let's just jump into it. To beat Super Mario Galaxy, we needed 60 stars. And to gather those 60 stars, we sadly had to collect some star bits. As a bit of a refresher, here's where we got those evil itsy bitsy star bitsy. We needed to collect 5 star bits during the tutorial part to feed the Luma that wouldn't shut up otherwise, and we needed 100 to feed this hungry Luma in Good Egg Galaxy. And we also needed one at the end in the final level, bringing up the total to 106 star bits. No! What you're saying is wrong! It's wrong! That's not the truth! Let me tell you the truth! So, see me craft the official Mario Galaxy Gamer God revealed to me that there's actually a way to avoid collecting this one star bit in the final level, and as you can see, it involves doing some crazy Jackie Chan jumps. <laughs> but as you can clearly see, well, we can avoid collecting that 106 star bit. <laughs> well, thank you, Simicraft. You saved me once again. So, you guys better subscribe to Simicraft right now, okay? Well, that means that we now start our quest with 105 star bits. And now, as the title of this video implies, let's get every single stars in the game and see how many star bits are actually needed to fully beat it 100%. As we come back into the action and Rosalina welcomes us, we can see how many stars we need to get to beat the game, and that number is 59, so let's start working, shall we? Beating the game unlocks the Purple Comets, a bunch of levels where you need to collect 100 purple coins, and Good Egg Galaxy is our first stop. Although there are coins everywhere, no star bits are actually in the way. Ghostly Galaxy is a little bit scarier because we only have one minute to collect those coins and we have to use the cursor on screen. There's a couple star bits around the map so make sure to keep the star pointer away from those and you'll be good. Honey Hive Galaxy hit the purple coins all over the place and there's a bunch of star bits scattered all around the levels. If you thought about using the vine to get to the other side of the pit, well just don't, as there are unavoidable star bits up there. Do the slope climbing trick that I taught you in the first part of the video instead. Battle Rock Galaxy is also not very difficult. You're just going to have to make sure the star pointer is nowhere in the screen to avoid collecting the bits in the background and you'll be okay. While we're here, I realize I had a letter in my pocket. It's my boy Loogie, and it looks like he's in trouble. So let's go save him for yet another star. Space Junk has a speedy comet in orbit, and this one's a speed run through a level full of pull stars, so you'll have to be extra careful as collecting star bits can happen pretty easily. Thankfully, it is possible to beat it star bitless. I guess now is a good time to explain how prankster comets work in Mario Galaxy. They appear and they go according to different cycles, so sometimes your map will look like this, you know, with no prankster comets and no stars to get. But if that happens, well, you can feed this hungry Luma 20 star bits to move things around. But you know, since we're trying to avoid collecting star bits, well, we're not gonna do this. But thankfully, you can move the cycles and make prankster comets appear by just replaying an older level and collecting its star. Once you replay and beat that old stage, well, comets will move around and they will appear on your map once again and you'll get to collect new stars. Yay! We saved ourselves some star bits. Beach Bow's purple comet is like a treasure hunt, forcing you to move all over the level to gather all of the coins. No star bits need to be collected though. Space Junk Galaxy's purple comet doesn't even feature star bits, so this one's a freebie. Next up was the Battle Rock Daredevil Comet, which forced me to defeat top maniacs without getting hit once. Just make sure to run as far as you can from that boss after every hit to avoid the star bits and you'll be all good. Gusty Garden Galaxy has no star bits in the garden as you collect the purple coins, which makes it super easy. And would you look at that, another letter from my bro Lugi. 
<sighs> Let's save his butt once more and make our way to Freeze Flame Galaxy, which contains a hundred more coins to get. <sighs> This level is quite huge and does contain a few star bits here and there, but they can all be avoided by being careful. Guess what? The same thing can be said about Dusty Dunes Galaxy. Just take your time, never move the star pointer on screen and you'll be all good. Gold Leaf Galaxy has a speedy comet in orbit and this will force us to race against Shadow Mario to get the star. And if you avoid the star bits falling from the sky as you race, well you'll win this one in no time. And while we're here, well make your way up again on those platforms and collect all of the purple coins for yet another easy star. Next up is the Boogie Base Green Star, where you have to dive down there to get a Torpedo Ted to follow you and open up this green pipe, which is actually very easy. And while we're on the topic of very easy stars, well Sea Slide wants to use B Mario and fly all around the stage to collect the purple coins. This level will take forever to beat and it's legit super boring, but thankfully it's also pretty easy to beat without a star bit. Deep Dark Galaxy does contain a few star bits around the haunted pirate ship, but none that will be of any trouble to the quest. The same thing can be said for the secret star, which will be obtained in no time. Gusty Garden's Daredevil Comet Star is a rematch against Major Burrows, one of the most annoying boss ever, but if you make sure to run away from him after each hit, you'll dodge every single star bits. Easy. While we don't have any more prankster comets around, we still have a bunch of secret stars that we can get, like this one in Beach Bowl Galaxy that you get by opening up the chest with a Koopa shell. And once you reach this part, well you'll need the Cataquack to push you up to the star. And since it's literally surrounded by star bits, well you'll have to be very careful and approach it from the top. Scary, but possible. Ghostly Galaxy does contain a lot of star bits while you make your way to the top of this greenish section, but thankfully you can avoid them all by being extra careful. Use the star pointer in that bubble in Gold Leaf Galaxy to get all those notes for yet another star and make sure a bullet billy is following you to get the secret star in Dusty Dunes. Now we're having a bit of a problem, as we got all of the prankster comets and all of the secret stars that we could get without touching a single star bit. Yup, this means that we'll have to play those levels with hungry lumas and this also means we'll have to start collecting star bits to feed them. Ugh. The hungry luma in Battle Rock Galaxy wants 30 star bits to reveal the secret path to everyone's favorite star, the garbage blowing up one. Ugh. Like seriously, does anybody like that one? <laughs> Space Junk's Hungry Luma is hungrier and wants 50 star bits to open up the secret path. After that, we just jump on Goombas while being on a wooden Yoshi planet. So, you know, that's all we're getting. No more star bits. Gusty Garden Galaxy is a confusing one, because you need to get a Rainbow Mario power up to defeat the Golden Chain Chomp and get its star. But to get the rainbow star to appear, well you need to collect those question mark tokens. And those tokens also make star bits appear. I tried my best to avoid collecting star bits, but alas, even by jumping and avoiding those vines the best I can, my personal best was 16 star bits. It's not that bad, I suppose. Dusty Dune's Hungry Luma requires 20 star bits to let you pass, and once that's done, there are no more star bits on the way. There's tons of yucky coins though, but you know, that's beside the point. And with that green star, we now have unlocked the green star galaxies. Three extra levels for us to get stars in. Let's explore them, shall we? Rolling Gizmo is our first stop, and this very stressful galaxy has way too many star bits falling from the sky, but we can thankfully avoid them all. Loop de Swoop Galaxy is yet another fun level without star bits to collect. Sadly, the third and final green star galaxy, the Bubble Blast Galaxy, might not be as generous. This level forces you to use your star pointer to push Mario inside of a bubble through many challenges, and four of those are pretty easy to do without a star bit. But this last one over there is not really nice. As you can see, there's a lot of star bits, and you gotta use your star pointer to move Mario around, so collecting them by accident is way too easy. There's one star bit that we are forced to collect as we go up this path, but I soon realized that you can actually get Mario's bubble to fit 
in between those rows of star bits. With my shaky hands, I collected a star bit down there, bringing up the total to two. But in theory, it would be possible to do it with only one star bit. C Slide's Hungry Luma wants 40 star bits to reveal the secret path. And once that's done, we just collect music notes, so no more star bits have to be collected here. Looks like we ran out of secret stars to get, meaning we'll now have to explore the stars we skipped last time because they gave us evil star bits. Starting off with Toy Time Galaxy, where, if you remember correctly, we were forced to collect two star bits as we made our way across those pencils. And there was nothing we could do about it. There is still nothing we can do about it. But thankfully, after we collect those bits, well, the rest of the level can be done without collecting more, even with Spring Mario's Power Up. Toy Time 2 is an easy star, and no star bits will be collected in this one. And I wish I could say the same thing about Toy Time 3, which contains way too many star bits on our way. We can dodge the first few we encounter, cool, but we'll soon reach this part where we need to use a cannon to reach this lounge star in the background. We are forced to use the pointer to, well, point at the lounge star, but there's actually no way to avoid collecting a few star bits after that is done, as the pointer will still be on the screen and cannot be moved out of the screen fast enough. However, I'm playing this on the Super Mario 3D All-Stars version of the game, meaning I can actually play this game in handheld mode. And in this mode, well, instead of moving the cursor around with the controller, you actually tap on the screen, meaning that I can technically tap way faster than I can move the cursor. And by using the Switch video recording feature, here's what my best run looked like by tapping as fast as I could. Zero star bits, baby! We did it. Now let's hop into this lounge star. Uh, what? <laughs> what? We are actually forced to collect eight star bits no matter what we do. Man, this sucks. Toy Time's purple comet is in orbit and it forces us to collect 100 purple coins while moving on a big Luigi sprite with platforms disappearing and spinning as we make our way across them. Thankfully, there is 150 purple coins and we only need 100, so this one's pretty easy. But you know what? I just wonder if it's actually possible to collect all 150 coins. Subscribe to the new More Nico YouTube channel and you'll see Nico attempt to get all 150 purple coins. Uh. Okay, thanks. Toy Time's Secret Star contains a hungry Luma that wants 50 star bits to open up this secret path, but after that, no more are required. The Fast Foe Comet is also easy to beat without a star bit, so this galaxy is finally over. Melty Molten Galaxy is one we skipped, because of those two star bits you automatically collect as you use this lounge star and make your way across the lava. But thankfully, after this part, there are no more star bits to collect, and Melty Molten 2 and 3 are actually very easy stars that we can get without touching a single star bit, so that's pretty Liebig. But the Daredevil Comet forces us to do the first star again, but with only one health point this time around. So you know what that means? Well, two more star bits will be collected while using the lounge star. It's not like this hungry Luma would help us in this quest anyways, as he wants 80 star bits to open up the secret path. Ah, come on. The purple coins can be all collected without a star bit, thankfully, so, you know, there's that. Welcome to Dreadnought Galaxy, a level we skipped because of this 2D section over here. We have to do wall jumps to get up there, and there are star bits on the way. My personal best was 5 star bits, as I managed to avoid collecting a couple by doing spin jumps and long jumps, and I think that's not too bad. Watch out for Dreadnought 2, because these chain jumps explode into star bits once you hit all of the switches, and that's not cool. Make sure the pointer is off screen for this 2D section, and you'll be all good. Dreadnought 3 is an easy level, but no matter what you do, you'll always have to collect two star bits when you get into that lounge star. That's a bummer. Especially since the speedrun star will bring you up there again, so that's two more star bits in the bag. <sighs> Thankfully, the purple coins and the secret stars are all easy and require no more star bits. 
Just more garbage blowing up. Matter Splatter Galaxy is really annoying and forces you to go through a 2D section and you absolutely have to grab a minimum of two star bits to get up there and then two more as you climb up as Spring Mario. So that's a total of four more. And now, well, everything is done on my screen as you can see. No more comets, no more secrets, all we have left now are those hungry Lumas waiting around patiently next to the world hubs. Get ready to grab a bunch of star bits, as we need 400 to feed this one and unlock the sweet sweet galaxy. And this galaxy doesn't force us to collect more, so there's that. 400 more star bits are actually required to get to the sling pod galaxy. And this one is just a nightmare, forcing us to collect a lot of star bits. My best run here is 54 star bits. Ouch, that hurts. 600 star bits are required to unlock the Drip Drop Galaxy, an easy level that doesn't have star bits in it. To get to the Big Mouth Galaxy, you need 800 star bits, and this level's easy as well. 1000 star bits are needed to unlock the Sand Spiral Galaxy, a level where you just have to grab the boot power up and fly to the end. 1600 star bits are needed to unlock the Snow Cap Galaxy, one of the most boring, if not the most boring galaxy of them all. You just have to grab bunnies. And last but not least, 1200 star bits are needed to unlock the Boo Boneyard Galaxy. A very fun race against a quick boo with a helmet. The final galaxy is now unlocked for me, the Bonefin Galaxy. And this is just an underwater boss fight, so no star bits will be collected. And there we go, we have 120 stars. We did it, we fully beat the game. Or did we? Rosalina keeps talking about going to another world, and after defeating Bowser once more, well, you unlock Super Luigi Galaxy. And what is that you might be asking yourself? Well, you gotta redo the entire game, as my boy Lugi. <laughs> Luigi's controls are similar to Mario, but the green dude jumps higher and slides more when you move the control stick around. So, in a way, Playing as Luigi can be a little bit more difficult. So yeah, I did redo the entire game as Luigi and had to collect star bits at the exact same spots as Mario did. And once that was done, well Rosalina revealed that a brand new star was available to play as both Mario and Luigi. The Grand Finale Galaxy. This level is actually just a relaxing stroll through the Mushroom Kingdom and you must collect some purple coins and while there are some star bits falling down from the sky here and there, they're all super easy to avoid. Okay, now's the time to grab your pencils and erasers, to grab your calculators and your spreadsheets, and we'll see how many star bits we collected during this gameplay. We needed 100 star bits for the Hungry Luma in Good Egg Galaxy, 30 star bits for the one in Battle Rock, 50 for Space Junk, 20 for Dusty Dunes, 40 for Sea Slide, 50 for Toy Time, and 80 for Melty Molten Galaxy. Then, we needed 400 star bits to unlock the Sweet Sweet Galaxy, 400 to unlock Sling Pod, 600 to unlock Drip Drop, 800 for Big Mouth, 1000 for Sand Spiral, 1600 for Snow Cap, and 1200 for the Boo Boneyard Galaxy. We have to make sure not to forget the 5 star bits we had to feed to the Hungry Luma in the tutorial section though. Even though we had to touch a couple star bits in some of those levels like Gusty Garden Galaxy, Melty Molten Galaxy, Dreadnought Galaxy, well all of the star bits we collected have been used to feed the Hungry Lumas, so they're already counted in the total. Technically speaking, to beat Super Mario Galaxy, with all 242 stars, you need 6,375 star bits as Mario and as Luigi, bringing the total to 12,750 star bits. So, well, there you have it. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope my math wasn't too off at the end, and you know, if it was, well, I know you big brain gamers will fix my mistakes, because to be honest, well, I got confused real quick. Subscribe, smash the bell, give a like, and tap the cards on screen to watch even more videos. Alright, 
I'll see you in the next one. Bye!